And we have a CNN exclusive right now here in the Situation Room. Our chief international correspondent, Clarissa Ward, got some exclusive access to a city in Afghanistan that's considered uh, to be the birthplace of the Taliban and is now one of their biggest targets as U.S. troops withdraw from the country. Clarissa is joining us live uh, tonight from Kabul. Uh, Clarissa, the Taliban offensive is clearly intensifying. You're doing amazing reporting. Update our viewers. So, Wolf, if you can believe it, now nearly half of Afghanistan's 34 provincial capitals are under direct threat from the Taliban. Three of them are under siege. And we visited one of those, Kandahar. It's a strategically vital city for the government. It's also the spiritual birthplace of the Taliban, important for both sides under siege. The situation there is desperate. Take a look. On the road to Kandahar's front line, there is still civilian traffic, even as the Taliban inches deeper into the city. Afghan commandos have agreed to take us to one of their bases. This used to be a wedding hall, now it's the front line position. Most of the fighting here happens at night, but Taliban okay, so snipers are at work 24 hours a day. From snipers? Yes. The men tell us the Taliban are hiding in houses just 50 yards away from us. And they shoot from people's homes? They shoot yeah, from yeah, civilian yeah. They, you homes? See, you see, this is our civilians' homes. We cannot uh, uh, use, you know, the uh, big weapons, uh, the heavy weapons. Up on the roof, Major Habibullah Shaheen wants to show us something. So you can actually see the Taliban flag just it's... over on the mountaintop there. See the flag. It's been nearly a month since the Taliban penetrated Afghanistan's second largest city. Since then, these men haven't had a break. U.S. airstrikes only come in an emergency. The rest of the time, it's up to them to hold the line. We feel a little bit weak without U.S. airstrikes and ground support and equipment, he says. But this is our soil, and we have to defend it. Bombardment using heavy weapons. In a villa in the eastern part of the city, Kandahari lawmaker Gul Ahmed Kamin is hunkered down. In decades of war, he says he's never seen the fighting this bad. Millions of people in this city are waiting for when they will be killed, uh, when someone will kill them, uh, when their home will be destroyed, and it is happening every minute. Just spell out for me here, the Taliban is basically surrounding the entire city of Kandahar now. Is that correct? Definitely, yes. And so, where is there to go? Uh, nowhere. So there is uh, 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 only uh, two options, do or die. Do or die? Yes. And what does do look like? Uh, that is the thing to convince uh, different sites uh, to cease fire, uh, to work on peace, uh, to convince them to not to fight, not to kill. But that is a tall order in a city where war has become part of everyday life. You can probably see there's a lot more cars on the road than there were previously, and that's because in just two minutes at 6 p.m., the cell phone network gets cut across the city, and that's when the fighting usually starts. Throughout the night, the sounds of gunfire and artillery pierce the darkness. Kandahar is the birthplace of the Taliban. They are intent on taking it back, and the government knows it cannot afford to lose it. By day, an eerie calm holds. The UN says more than 10,000 people are now displaced in this city. On the outskirts of town, we find 30 families camped out in an abandoned construction site. He's saying that none of these children have fathers. All of their fathers have been killed in the fighting. 35-year-old Rubina fled with her two daughters to escape the fighting after her husband was shot dead. But still, it gets closer and closer. Last night, I didn't sleep all night, she says, and the fear was in my heart. 
In the short time we are there, more families arrive. Street vendor Mahmed Ismail says they fled the village of Malajad after an airstrike hit. Three dead bodies were rotting outside our home for days, but it was too dangerous to get them, he says. The Taliban is attacking on one side, the government is attacking the other side. In the middle, we're just losing. Back at the base, dust coats the chairs where wedding guests would normally sit. As the siege of Kandahar continues, life here is in limbo, with no end in sight. And just to give you a sense, Wolf, of the uptick in violence, the Red Cross says that the hospital that they support in Kandahar has treated more than 2,300 weapon-wounded patients in the first six months of this year. That is more than double the amount that they saw in the first six months of last year. All of this happening against the backdrop of the U.S. withdrawal, Wolf, and the new U.N. envoy to Afghanistan warning today that this situation could potentially be, quote, a catastrophe catastrophe so serious it would have few, if any, parallels this century. Wolf? Uh, what about you, uh, Clarissa? I'm worried about uh, what's going on over there, obviously. Uh, uh, how, how dangerous is it? The situation is very dangerous, but primarily it's very dangerous, Wolf, for the Afghan people who have already suffered so much. They've lived through decades and decades of war, and now there is profound concern and anxiety throughout the country uh, about what the future will hold. Will this turn into a protracted civil war? Will things get even uglier? How can Afghan forces launch some kind of a counteroffensive to take back the territory, to stop the Taliban from seizing more when they don't have the support of the U.S. military, and you heard them say it. They understand that this is their duty uh, and that they must defend their soil, as you heard there from Major Shaheen. But there's still a big question mark as to how they can do that when they're putting out fires all across the country, another provincial capital, or sorry, the first provincial capital in Nimroz falling today to the Taliban. Well, one, of, one of our truly courageous uh, journalists, Clarissa Ward, stay safe over there. Uh, we will be in touch. Thanks for that excellent, excellent report.